It's been about a week or so since the latest Bilderberg meeting, and now we're hearing the actual positions of world and foreign banks around Bitcoin and blockchain technology. And they're calling for crypto regulation before the next known economic crisis in our immediate pending future. At the same time, a former US defense official is testifying and encouraging politicians to allow Bitcoin and blockchain development in America to give Americans the same benefit and security that the rest of the world is currently gaining. Is fintech and national security related across the world? And uh, is our financial stability at odds with our nation's defense? There's a lot to go over, a lot to review. Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. I wanna thank you for showing up, thank you for being here, thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to go over the news. There's so much to go over. You know, we are really trying to keep these videos short, and uh, there's so much that we're leaving out. And it, I just really hope that you're taking in this information and, and uh, enjoying this information just because there's so many different perspectives of what's going on in the world. Uh, before I get into some of the uh, higher level news and uh, other points of that nature, I want to say thank you uh, again for being here. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for supporting this channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing and commenting and sharing your thoughts with us. We're just loving the community and just loving uh, all these ideas and sharing all this information because at the you know start of the day, none of us are full experts. There's just too much information for anyone to know everything. And uh, together we can just crowdsource, come together and have the best of the knowledge and the information available, especially when there's a lot of competing interests that are fighting against us. Um, with everyone watching the videos, I, I want to really thank you for you know tapping the like button, uh, being gentle with that computer mouse. You don't want to have to uh, purchase extra computer equipment when you don't have to. If you hit the down button because you don't like something that we say, you don't like something that we talk about, then you know please just comment below. Let us know what is it that you don't like about the show, so we can you know think about consider that in improving the show. Uh, you know, we can't cater to everyone's critique, but we truly appreciate the constructive criticism. In addition to that, we also appreciate the uh, first donation that we received uh, in Bitcoin. And that was just really exciting to receive that donation. We have donation addresses in the show notes below, as well as some affiliate links that support the show. And uh, ultimately, with everything that's going on in the news, we're looking to help this show remain as independent as possible uh, and, and just to really say what it is that we think without allowing anyone to censor uh, th what it is that we want to share with you. So all the support, even if it's just liking the video, it means the world to us because every single like, every single share, every single subscriber, every single minute that you view of our videos is helping us bring this information to the world, and we cannot do this without you. Uh, with that, let's, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that are going on in the news, so we can uh, uh, pop into some of those topics super quick, take a look at the market, go over some major news that's happening that we're hearing about uh, from major banks and banking leaders that coincidentally these opinions and these viewpoints are coming out about a week or so since the, the major Bilderberg meeting. And so it's interesting to see the correlation of announcements with, uh, with other events. And so let's see if we can put this all together and make a little bit of sense and let's discuss. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not gonna go into these whole articles because we, I think most of us have heard about this, but just in case you haven't heard about this, the Jack's wallet, which is a wallet we've talked about before, and it's a wallet that we love. This is a wallet that 
does come with some vulnerabilities. And we're taking a, a hard look at all the different vulnerabilities at each of the wallets, even for example, the Trezor wallet and the Ledger Nano S wallet. And so we're gonna try to really hack the, the, the downsides and really figure out what is, what is the case in which you don't wanna use any one of these wallets. In the case of the Jax wallet, if this Jax wallet is on a computer and the computer itself is insecure, then uh, meaning that anyone can access that computer, someone with the knowledge of, of knowing how to uh, hack the Jax wallet with the information that's now publicly available, they would be able to steal all the money that you have in your Jax wallet. So if you do have a Jax wallet, don't hold a lot of, I would recommend don't hold a lot of cryptocurrency on a Jax wallet. Use private keys, cold storage, Trezor, Ledger. Uh, if you have a large amount of crypto in a Jax and someone hacks that computer and gets access to that computer, they can steal everything in 20 seconds. Uh, with that, Jax is also connected to the Shapeshift API. Shapeshift is a company that allows uh, people to go to shapeshift.io and shift any one coin that they provide, that they offer, that they have a connection to, and shift it into any other coin. So you, you can take Bitcoin, turn it into Ethereum, uh, Zcash, turn it into Litecoin, uh, Pivx, turn it into Ethereum Classic, whatever coins that they support at whatever the exchange rate is at that moment. With that being said, Shapeshift has been having some major issues with delaying people's uh, receipts of their shift conversion, the conversion of their coins. And uh, this has been uh, not something I've been hearing a lot about, but with that being said, th this is happening and people are, are having to wait a day or two days for them to receive their, uh, to receive their coins. And so people are missing out in key trades or not getting the exchange rates that they're looking for. And uh, you just have to keep in mind that all those shape shift is amazing and it, it's a critical tool that is really pushing uh, the development of all sorts of cryptocurrencies and blockchain development, that Shapeshift is a, uh, a central sort of hub that you, you are trusting and you just need to um, understand, uh, understand that and just be a little bit careful uh, with the issues that they could be having. So check out reddit.com and uh, this is where you're gonna get a lot of the real news of what's happening with each of these aspects of the world. So popping over to the market, uh, the, the, the big news from this morning or yesterday that it is, I guess isn't news anymore is that our market cap was below $100 billion of the, the total cryptocurrency market cap. Uh, since that huge crash we had, uh, which mainly happened, people are saying, because of the letter that came out from Bitmain and uh, Jihan Wu, uh, and that letter that's talking about the, you know, adding on fear, uncertainty, and doubt into the the Bitcoin split, of which there may be two Bitcoins with this, uh, the the soft fork or the hard fork, and all these things that are going on, you know, that letter from Bitmain, which they have their agenda of making more money, in my opinion, not the agenda of developing the community, that added a lot of fear, uncertainty, and, and doubt. People sold a lot of cryptocurrency. Uh, there, was a, there was a lot of money exiting, not just Bitcoin, but all cryptocurrency. Uh, and I saw this number in the low nine, about, you know, the low 90 billions. And so that was about $10 billion that exited the market. Uh, and and now, we're, now we're back up to 104 billion uh, because what happened, everyone saw the price dip. Look at this all down here. It, you know, it dropped down in Coinbase. I, I saw it drop down to as low as $2,200. Coinbase is down. You know Coinbase is down because it's a good time to buy. And uh, everyone wants to get in there and purchase because they know it's going to go right back to $3,000. That's what, that's what they're expecting. That's what they're speculating. And so they absolutely want to purchase it at $2,200 because that's their chance to just, you know, buy Bitcoin on sale. So uh, the difference in the market cap between Ethereum and Bitcoin, we have 
what, seven billion, about seven billion dollars. Uh, again, this is striking distance for the overall market cap of Ethereum to supersede the over market, uh, overall market cap of Bitcoin. But let me tell you, when, if and when this happens, don't let it deter you, don't let it scare you. Bitcoin is still uh, very large. Bitcoin is still very strong. Bitcoin is still very secure. Bitcoin still has very unique characteristics and properties that Ethereum just doesn't have. Bitcoin is limited to the 21 million. Ethereum is not limited. There's fewer Bitcoins than Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum has a lot of baggage with all these ICOs and all the code that's going on it. It's both a benefit and a curse to, you know, have so many different responsibilities on top of that blockchain. Um, and what we're what we're going to be seeing, what we've heard in the past, and what we're seeing now is just Bitcoin is the reserve currency. It is it is money. It is gold. It is the uh, cryptocurrency in which all other cryptocurrencies are bought and sold from. And while there's short term disturbances in the market, and there's crazy things that are happening over the next six to eighteen months, please don't forget about three years from now don't think don't forget about five years from now don't forget about 10 years from now when all of this will be but a distant memory right just like just like re remember back when there is that that crazy crickling sound when you would uh pick up the phone and someone was on the internet it's it's all a distant memory on the internet and and now the whole internet is just a different world that flows with ease it, the internet used to be something that would worry law enforcement and would worry uh, uh, AT and T and would you know the disruption that the internet was going to cause. We've been through all of this before, so just have a long-term mentality because time inside this market, let it be the stock market or cryptocurrency market, especially this emerging cryptocurrency market. Time in this market is exponentially more important than timing the market if you simply buy and hold and just forget about it the majority of people would say that you are going to be more than okay uh, and, and so that's that's why that's what I, I hope that we're all walking away with is that long-term mentality even though there's a lot of short-term you know drama going on right it's like high school it's like let's get let's get through this let's get past this and let's get on with the rest of our lives <clears throat> cool so jumping into um another another quick story i just wanted to touch upon real quick this story came out on cointelegraph.com it's not uh, related to the cryptocurrency space at, at all it's related to the precious metals and inside the precious metals this u.s judge uh, upholds uh this other decision to confiscate a family's uh set of gold coins that they found that's value valued at over 80 million dollars and so what happened is that there was this family that found 10 gold coins allegedly worth 80 million dollars and uh, it, they were confiscated through the mint when the family brought these coins to verify their authenticity. And, uh, and so the coins are originally belonged to the state uh, according to, this, according to the, the, what the mint was saying and what the, the judge and the state was saying. And so therefore the, discovery, uh, the discoverers would not be offered compensation for these coins because they found these coins and the state is saying because they were all recalled and removed from circulation, they were all belonging to the state in the first place. That's the position of the state. Even though when I was a kid, I thought that if you if you found, you know, lost gold after, you know, 30 years, then that gold, you know, is then the, the finder's gold. But the, the state um, made a decision to, to take these uh, 10 1933 Saint Godin's double eagle coins and uh, and they're just denied and so the law and so we went over this and so how is this related well cryptocurrencies rise um, and we see the regulations coming out uh, with attempts to potentially confiscate people's Bitcoin and cryptocurrency this just 
strikes a, a chord with uh, with not just precious metal holders and gold bugs, but it also strikes a chord with the crypto anarchists of the world that don't like the fact that this is happening and this could be used as precedent to then conf confiscate uh, people's cryptocurrency, uh, which this shouldn't even be happening in the first place. So what do you think about this? Uh, do you think that these gold coins belong to the state because that's what the state said? Uh, or do you think that they belong to the family because the family found them in the ground after uh, you know a significant amount of time has passed? So finally, popping into today's first story, uh, around the main topic of today, we have regulation is the only hope for Bitcoin, according to Morgan Stanley. So real quick, who's Morgan Stanley? Let's check him out. Morgan Stanley is a leading global financial services firm providing investment banking, securities, wealth management, investment management services. They're headquartered in New York City, but they're really a, a global operation. And they and they operate and they operate worldwide. Uh, a lot of additional information. We're not going to go too much into that, but at a high level, they're traded on the New York State Stock Exchange and they're leading leading global global financial services investment banking firm. And so Morgan Stanley is saying uh, they came out with a statement Tuesday calling for even more government oversight. And they said that the very nature of Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer non-regulatory currency system uh, and that it allows for greater autonomy of, of holders are all risks, not just for Bitcoin, but for the banking institutions themselves. And so big money comes to crypto. That's what we have here in this title. So Morgan Stanley stated that these regulations uh, might require individual tailoring based on the different blockchain technology and the different currencies. So the regulation for Bitcoin may be very different than the regulation that they want to see the government provide, say, Ethereum, or different than the regulation that they want to see the government provide the, the Morgan Stanley's, you know, uh, dollar coin, right, or the government's Fed coin. So they're saying that not all cryptocurrencies are the same, and Bitcoin should definitely be regulated differently than other cryptocurrencies, each on a case-by-case -case basis. So the, the regulators are looking to have a master key so all transactions are visible to them. And we know this from understanding the, the analysis of the blockchain technology is that the, the more access that regulators have and uh, the, the, the less um, control that the people have, that's also gonna decrease the security of that blockchain. So by giving the regulators all of these things that they want, that they already have with uh, conventional systems, that's gonna, at the same time, take away from the security and a lot of the benefits that the technology is fundamentally even providing. And regardless of what Morgan Stanley is saying about this now, and regardless about the regulations and the call for regulations that's potentially scaring a lot of people, while they're saying that with the statement on the one hand, we already know from yesterday's video that these investment banks are already dumping money into Bitcoin. And so with the stock market now, the stock market goes up, the stock market goes down, the stock market goes up, the stock market goes down. And each time these Wall Street traders are buying low and selling high and using these systems of, you know, you know, knowing how the market is going up and down for them to increase their profits and increase the percentage yield on, uh, on, on their investment funds for their clients. And so separate from Morgan Stanley, what we have here is that we have the uh, head of the Bundesbank proposing digital currency to compete with Bitcoin. So this is uh, head of the German bank, Jens Wildman, head of Germany's central bank, Bundesbank, and one of the most powerful bankers in Europe. 
again proposing the development of a central bank issued digital currency to directly compete with Bitcoin. So backing up a second, what do we have here? Deutsche Bundesbank, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Again, the Central Bank of the Federal Republic of Germany, part of the European system of central banks. Uh, due to its strength and, and size, it's the most influential member of the European system of central banks. So uh, this isn't just Germany, but this is one of the head leaders at one of the head banks of all of Europe. And this particular person, uh, a German ec economist, president of Bundesbank, chairman of the board of the Bank for International Settlements, uh, he used to be an advisor to Chancellor Angela Merkel, president of Bundesbank since 2011. And so Wildman argued that Bitcoin could potentially worsen future financial crises. So this is interesting. So very clearly, very directly calling for a bank issued central currency to directly compete with Bitcoin because Bitcoin could make the future financial crisis worse. And that's because Bitcoin, they're saying it's because Bitcoin is decentralized and uh, the non-existence of central entities within the Bitcoin network. So let's get dive into a little bit deeper into this. So during a speech featured by Business Insider, Weidman stated that the insurance of Central bank-based centralized digital currencies is safer for the public as the central bank cannot become insolvent. So why can't the central bank become insolvent? Uh, the central bank, you know, they'll go on to say, can't become insolvent because the government requires the central bank to, to be solvent. So a government can never allow a central bank to become insolvent. So let's go, let's go into this quote. There's a lot in here, so, so let's, let's dissect this. Allowing the public to hold claims on the central bank might make their liquid assets safer because a central bank cannot become insolvent. So if this bank issues a cryptocurrency, your cryptocurrency, they're saying that the bank's version of it, let's call it FedCoin, the Fed or the Eurocoin, uh, the, this FedCoin or this Eurocoin will always be backed by the full faith and credit of that government and that central bank. This is a feature which, be, which will become relevant, especially in times of crisis, especially in times of crisis, when there will be a strong incentive for money holders to switch their deposits into the official digital currency simply at the push of a button. So does this blow you away yet? Because is this a statement or is this a game plan, right? And so let's, let's read this red part again. In times of crisis, when there's a strong incentive for money holders to switch bank deposits into the official digital currency simply at the push of a button. This sounds like a game plan to me. So let's read it backwards. At the push of a button, they want to allow... Uh, uh, people to switch their bank deposits into an official digital currency when there's a strong incentive for money holders in a time of economic crisis. So it, 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 this is like Harry Potter or something. If you read this statement forward, then, you know, it, it sounds like he's sharing some ideas. But if you read the statement backwards, this is just a prediction of of what they're already planning and what's going to come. So again, just to read it again, at a at a put, <coughs> excuse me, at the push of a button, allowing users to switch deposits into the official digital currency. When there's going to be a strong incentive for money holders, in times of crisis. That's when this feature will become especially relevant, allowing uh, the public to. Uh, have their cryptocurrency in a bank that can't become insolvent. So moving on to this part in blue, 
But what might be a boom for savers in search for safety might be a bane for banks, as this makes a bank run potentially even easier. So it's just amazing. So from the bank's perspective, they don't want everyone to run to the bank and for everyone to pull their money out of the bank at the same time or say, um, take all their money, their, their Euro coin or their Fed coin, and then instantly take that, that digital uh, central bank currency and instantly convert it to Bitcoin. They wanna prevent those things from happening while allowing the creation of these other ideas that give them some sort of central control and competition over Bitcoin. Um, so as a safe haven, uh, Bitcoin is a safe haven asset because its value and price are not determined by the economy or the performance of other sectors. So that's why people do want to invest in Bitcoin, because the value of Bitcoin is only determined by the number of people in the world that want it and how much they're willing to pay for it. Bitcoin is its own market that's driven by the simple economic factors of supply and demand. And so if there's ever a run on the bank, if there's ever an issue with a country or a central bank or an economic sector, let it be finance or technology or education or hospitality or, or construction, uh, no matter what happens in the, the region or the sector, Bitcoin is a safe haven because it's independent of, of those performances. So the basic point that central banks can't become insolvent or bankrupt uh, are supported by the respective governments is accurate. So again, the central banks can't go insolvent because the government needs the bank to exist. Centralized digital currencies could compete with Bitcoin. And then an issue of liquidity uh, is, is also existing for the banks because the banks, what the banks are most concerned with is that everyone is going to, you know, when the next economic crisis happens, that people are going to freak out and then convert all their fiat dollars of whatever currency into Bitcoin and, and other legitimate cryptocurrencies, legitimate being truly decentralized, truly peer to peer, and not controlled by a central authority that will just be able to take your tokens or, uh, manipulate the, the total supply, which is decreasing the value of everyone's individual token. And so this is just for you to let you know exactly what's going to happen. None of this should be a surprise when all of this rolls out. It shouldn't be a surprise that there's going to be an economic crisis. And it shouldn't be a surprise that when the economic crisis happens, there's already going to be a Euro coin and a Fed coin. It shouldn't be a surprise that, uh, there's going to be regulations around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and all this information is is the game plan that they're sharing with us now. And so while the world banks and the investment banks and these uh, uh, central banks from the world around the world are talking about the control of Bitcoin and the control of cryptocurrency and fintech financial technology in relationship to the economy and the money supply. We have a former US defense official who's encouraging blockchain investments. So moving over here, what we have is Eric Rosenbeck. And so Eric Rosenbeck in a testimony before the US Senate Foreign Relations Committee is advising that there should be collaboration to incentivize investment in cloud-based security, blockchain-enabled transactions, and quantum computing in America. And uh, this, this investment in blockchain solutions is part of a broader fight against cyber threats. And so as someone in the Department of Defense who you know, seemingly has the position of caring about the safety of Americans and the interests of the of America inside the you know our borders of our fifty states and our territories from uh, a nationalistic perspective. Eric is seeing that other countries are involved in financial technology 
uh, blockchain enabled transaction, uh, cloud security, quantum computing. And if America isn't encouraging these investments in America, then this is going to put us at greater risk of the different cyber threats. Um, because these technologies, you know, even if it's not a true cyber threat, the technology, if one civilization has it and the other civilization doesn't, it, it just gives the, the one side a huge advantage over the other side. It's one of the reasons that America is so strong today because we have so much invested into the internet and technology, uh, so many businesses, so much economic development. And then, you know, when, when Facebook is created and, and Facebook has all this information on, on all these different people, Facebook isn't a company that's owned, controlled, and headquartered in St. Petersburg, right? That's not, that's not where Google is headquartered either, right? That's not where Cisco is headquartered. All these companies are located in California or New York City or Texas or one of these other states in America. And in recent videos, we've been seeing Vladimir Putin and Russia encouraging major blockchain development, opening up regulations and in encouraging technology companies, even to some degree going to be allowing Bitcoin to be spread throughout Russia. And this is going to give Russia a huge advantage over America. So Eric Rosenbeck uh, is quoted here as saying, reducing the benefits that advisories derive is a key aspect in bolstering our deterrence posture. And so there are, our adversaries in this case are benefiting from cyber and information operations again, presumably around cloud-based security, blockchain-enabled transactions, and quantum computing. And the fact that the ad adversaries have this technology, and we don't, uh, again, just from his perspective as a leader in the Department of Defense, is putting us at a huge risk. And so Rosenbeck, who mostly served as the U.S. Secretary of the Army, a position within the Department of Defense, He's also served as a chief of staff to the Secretary of Defense, as well as uh, working a little bit as the Secretary of uh, uh, Secretary of the Air Force. And this isn't the the only official or organization at this sort of level that's that's saying this. Lockheed Martin, one of the largest U.S. defense contracts, announced it's incorporating blockchain into the supply chain as a part of its cybersecurity initiative. Um, so Lockheed Martin, which is creating all of this technology, warplanes and warships and spaceships, they're in actually going to be incorporating the blockchain technology to fully understand where information is coming from, where actual units, physical devices, pieces, components are coming from. And uh, are, are, it's just another example of utilizing the blockchain technology in a way that can help protect the, the national security of the nation. Uh, additionally, in the bit in purple here, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has doled out a number of grants toward a push in January, and the government-backed National Science Foundation revealed that it also wants to spend millions of dollars researching this area. So while Congress and the Senate and judges are debating the legality of if Bitcoin is legal and if Bitcoin is a currency and if Bitcoin is a commodity, and it's stifling all this regulation because all of these companies have fear, uncertainty, and doubt of if their company is going to get hit with fines and fees and if people are going to have to go to jail or uh, whatever the situations are. It's stifling the development of the t technology in America. And so because of that, all levels of government and uh, private and public infrastructure is missing out on this opportunity. So where is this all going to lead? It's, it's really, really interesting to have the dynamic where on one hand we have these world banks that have a huge, let's call it a fear. They have a fear of the Bitcoin as a competitor to the fiat dollar. And uh, it's, it's the central banks in America. It's the central banks in Europe. It's the central banks in every major country. They don't like the idea of Bitcoin competing with their their currency and they don't like the idea of the blockchain technology allowing um, 
any other digital cash to exist. Uh, I'm sure Dash would fall in that same category and Litecoin would, would fall into that same category. And uh, using Ethereum or Ethereum Classic as cash, I'm sure the central banks wouldn't like that as well. But the Bitcoin blockchain compared to any other blockchain, this is all categorized in this blockchain technology and this token. And fundamentally, the way the technology works is that the more decentralized this technology is, the more secure it is, the stronger it is, the more powerful it is at a, at a global scale. And so it's, it's, the statement is at odds to be able to control what people can do on one hand, but on the other hand, to allow the full implementation and use of the technology uh, f to, to the greatest benefit, these aren't exactly in line. So we know there's gonna be conflict coming down the road. We know that there's gonna be a bunning of heads in terms of what the central banks are gonna be looking for and in terms of what, uh, what organizations, both public and private, are gonna be looking for because there's, a, I think, a very clear line between the investment banks and, and the financial industry and essentially every other industry uh, just because of, you know, how the financial industry is really spread across, you know, f the, the actual financing and funding for everyone in the world to actually operate. <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the, the last note real quick, the thing that I think is most interesting about the Department of the Defense looking into Bitcoin and blockchain technology is that when we see the, some of these hearings in the FBI and we see that when they're talking about Bitcoin, they're talking about Bitcoin and the criminal activity associated with it. They're talking about uh, how Bitcoin is allowing terrorism to happen. And they're also talking about how the Tor browser is allowing terrorism to happen. The Tor browser is a web browser, if, if used correctly, allows you to use the internet so nobody will know who you are. And it, it can completely keep who you are private. This is technology that was actually developed I believe by DARPA and the US Department of Defense. This is technology that they developed to help keep their information secret as they were sharing information between different agencies and different spies for the interests of America. And uh, what happened is that in order for the Tor browser to be really successful, they needed more people in the world to use a Tor browser. So if only the military was using the Tor browser, then that decreased its security. It has that similarity to the blockchain technology of the decentralized nature of distributing, you know, information from one point to the other. And, you know, but in this case, things were getting lost in the middle. <clears throat> and so the Tor browser, the point is that the Tor browser is diametrically opposed to the, what the FBI is looking for and what the Congress is looking for and what the central banks are looking for. And so it's interesting to, to see that uh, the Department of Defense is really looking for security and is really looking for uh, what's in the more so what's in the best interests of America, um, even if that means allowing everyone to have the technology because the Department of Defense realizes the security that that gives the entire world. Um, really really interesting you know just something to think about I'm not really sure how it will play out but uh again um having the game plan from the banks seeing what the what morgan and stanley is saying seeing what uh, uh bundes bank is saying and then seeing how the central bank's perspective on bitcoin and blockchain technology is different than the the, I suppose the Department of Defense and the private sector are, are, are closer to being on the same page, right? How is this all gonna play out? Not exactly sure, really looking forward to it. Share your thoughts below. What do you think about the central banks of the world and them trying to regulate cryptocurrency? More importantly, what do you think about this game plan of a pending economic crisis and people being able to switch to uh, the, another cryptocurrency at a push of a button. Is this going to be something where an economic crisis is going to happen and all of our dollars are going to get switched to euro 
euro coins and fed coins or is this a situation where it's unstoppable and all these fiat dollars are going to get uh pushed into bitcoin or or are they going to stop that is only going to be a percentage of of fiat dollars getting into bitcoin before they they cut that floodgate it's hard to say and and then and then how's the department of defense and how's the military going to play in with assisting or you know assisting either end of of this debate uh very very interesting is the military buying bitcoin not exactly sure uh that's a crazy idea uh well thanks for showing up share your comments below gently tap that like button and uh subscribe if you haven't already i'm gary palmer jr and i'm glad that together we're minting coins <laughs>